Hey gang, it's Paul with Setback. Welcome back to our channel. We have a real treat for you today. We have some pros that are gonna critique our work after we framed and hung the drywall in this remodel. Josh, 31 years old, his dad started the drywall finishing company that he works for together with one other guy. They did all the taping and mudding and texturing and this place looks amazing. We're gonna show you some close-ups of their work, but first we wanna to talk to Josh, get his impressions on how we did, how can we improve, and maybe some tips and tricks that they do that we can all learn from. He's outside cleaning his equipment. Let me go out there and grab him, and let's have a little conversation about how we did as hangers. Just can't get that in the... Oh, the little... That, that kind of stuff drives me nuts, man. Like, <laughs> I don't even know if you can see that the camera. Alrighty, gang, you know we're back from Washington. The whole time on that airplane, I was anxious to get back to the job site and see what an incredible job our guys did, and this thing is five star, let me tell you. I'm here with Josh, the finisher. He did this along with his dad, who's young like me, 57, and one other guy, Levi, right? Yes, sir. So a three-man crew. Right. So the first day you showed up to the job, your dad's asking you, where are we going today? And you tell him, uh, we're going to a house hung by a couple of YouTubers. What'd your dad do? Make sure you got a hammer to beat some nails. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so you get here, and your first impressions of how we did as far as hanging the rock, compared to what you see every day out in the field as professionals hanging rock. How better, do we do? Better than most uh, when it comes to remodel. Um, this is, you know, tough hanging in here. Um, you got this 45 running across here. Y'all did a pretty good job on that. It's, uh, you know, the easiest thing you hang is gonna be, you know, fresh new wood, screws go in easy. Uh, that's not the case here. Uh, taking that in, into consideration, I think y'all did, uh, did a pretty good job. You know, a few screws to reset but uh, it's better to have to reset them than have them too deep, so. Right. Now, you're being nice because you told me about 60% of them, right? Yes, that, that's the truth. It's about 60% about of them. Um, some of the existing drywall, we re-nailed, uh, put a screw in here and there also. But um, overall, it was pretty good. I'd rather, like I said, I'd rather have nails yeah. hanging out than sunk all the way into the studs. So. Now, that, that surprised me because when I'm hanging drywall, I have a taping knife and I go over the, the screws with my blade to make right. sure it doesn't ring. Right. And uh, to know we missed that many was a little, little disheartening. But yes, I'll blame sir. on Jordan. I'll right. take, I'll take the blame. You always got, but Dad always tells you you got to have somebody with you to blame stuff on. Don't work by yourself. <laughs> oh, on this remodel for me, the whole package comes together right here, where these two load bearing walls came out. We put in these two beams, and we have these three different ceilings intersecting right there. And I gotta tell you, that looks like I envisioned it the whole time. And it's gonna be right. beautiful painting. I was somewhat concerned about this joint here. I know you had to flat tape it. Can you talk about that joint and how we should have hung it and then what you had to do to fix it? There's a few different ways guys are gonna hang that. They're either gonna pre-cut it or you have a butt joint on this back side. They're either gonna pre-cut it and then just do the best they can to line it up okay. or they're gonna leave your cap off right here and let it overhang and then take a razor knife and cut the back side and then put the cap on it to clean up the edge. Uh, the way y'all did it, y'all said y'all did it with a handsaw after you hung it and you had the cap up there. Right. So that left uh, a big flat surface, okay? So by the time I would have put my 45, my level line on there, the edge of it would have been right at right. the seam. Right. So we flat taped it right there to clean that up and then you know, put the level line on it and we were good from there. Um, Y'all's framing was really excellent when I come in here prior to y'all hanging, so that's why that come out so straight. Okay. You know, um, there was nothing that y'all did that was detrimental to this as far as the outcome, and that's, that's the big factor. So y'all didn't mess something up to where I can't make it nice and straight. Right. Mm. You know? Well, when I was cutting that with that saw, I was just thinking to myself, this is not the way Josh wants it. I, I just, I knew we had a misunderstanding, it was on, it was on me, but um, you did right. an awesome I got, job. I got your back on it, so it's pretty good. good. <laughs> we kept saying, Josh will fix it, Josh will fix right, it. Right, right. We were, we were saying that all day. Trust. You've never been able to say that before. Well, That's right. <laughs> you know, you can, you can uh, thank my dad for that. So he's the one that taught me he's been doing this in 77. So. Perfect. And you also mentioned to me that you had to re-nail this whole ceiling. Right. The existing drywall. And then when you say nail, that kind of made me question, do you really mean a nail? Did you use screws or nails? Right, we use nails oh, on it. And the reason being, if I go in here and I start putting screws, it's gonna tear it up more than putting the nails. 
And then, you know, the original framing is not perfect. So I'm gonna have a lot more screws trying to pop in this old drywall versus being able to tap a nail in and getting it tight, you know, and that cup head nail is gonna hold better in this situation. It's rare that you would hear me say, you know, I'm gonna use a, a nail versus a screw, but uh, this is one of those situations where it works out better uh, to use a nail versus, you know, putting 500 screws literally in the ceiling, you know, because some of these runs, it's not the case, on the existing drywall over here, but some of the runs up here, you literally have six original nails uh, per stud, uh, per rafter up here. So going back to how our screws weren't set all the way, you told me that you can't expect to do a whole job with the depth gauge on your drill in one set because Correct. you got new wood, old wood, LVLs, and that's a little surprising that you gotta constantly change that thing right. during a project. Most people would think, I set it and forget it. Um, no, that's not the case. On a new house, uh, pretty much you can. Um, you, you know, that lumber shows up, you know, it's, it should all be, you know, uh, the same age, however you want to look at it, you know, and it's new lumber, so you can pretty much set it and forget it. But at the same time, um, one mistake people make is not pushing the board to the wall before they screw. Mm. Okay, so they're letting the screw pull the board to the wall, and then that's going to cause issues because you're going to have a couple of screws that went in you know, and pull the board to the wall, and then the next screw, the board's already to the wall, you know, so there's different problems like that that, uh, that arise. So how would you know where to set the drill? You know, I'm going into new framing, so the drill needs to be this way, or I'm going into old framing, I need to set the drill this way. It's really getting used to your gun. Every mm. gun's gonna be different. We use uh, Dewalt, the Dewalt with the metal head on it. Um, it's, they call it the commercial, the commercial tip. Uh, we don't care for the battery operated screw guns. They just don't quite work as well. Old school with a cord. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to worry about batteries and everything. The tips on them, like I said, the metal head on the Dewalt works great. So you mentioned a remodel being very difficult. So like in this wall right here, we have old studs and new studs. So you're constantly fighting that right, in right. one piece of sheetrock. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the products used and how much so you okay. mentioned level line right what is level line level line we use it we, we refer to any odd angle like this as a 45 so whether it's you know 38 degrees or we just refer to it as a 45 inside outside 45 okay so anything like that we use a product by certainty called level line it comes in a little box it's roll it's paper with uh, two vinyl ridges that run down it and we've had We've had good luck with that. Uh, we've had zero callbacks as far as it cracking or coming loose. Uh, we apply it with a relatively heavy mixture of uh, all-purpose compound. Uh, you know, most brands of all-purpose will work, whether it be Freeman or USG. Um, USG is one of the better uh, all-purposes to use to, to apply it. It has a lot of vinyl in it. It's a limestone base. Works really well. And that's a mud on the. It's a mud, it's no mud glue, on. no staple, no glue, no staple. It's completely 100% mud on with all purpose. You can't use lightweight, uh, lightweight doesn't have uh, what accounts for the glue. So you use lightweight after it dries, you'll come, you can pull it right back off. Same way with paper tape. If you tape with lightweight, you're going to pull those that tape right back off of there, you know. So any taping that you're doing. Uh, whether it be a tape on metal corner bay, that that's all all purpose that needs to be used in those situations. Now we've talked about another project you were on. You set your corner bay with a laser. Correct. Did you use a laser on this one? No, indeed. Because the framing was perfect, right? Right. If the framing is good, then we don't have to. Well, we set the framing with a laser. We did. Right. 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 So there's no need for me to go. You know, as long as I'm keeping my clinch on square, and then we shoot it with a one inch uh, with a crown staple with one inch staples. Afterwards, everything in here was shot both sides. Uh, the, the, the bead that you see up top has mesh tape. That's the only thing we use mesh tape for, fiberglass tape, whatever you want to call it, on both sides of it running. And then the tops of up and down have mesh tape on it also. So your outside metal corner bead, you clinch it on and then you staple it? Clinch it and staple it, right. correct. Cool. And then what kind of mud did you use and how much of it? It, this takes uh, quite a bit. If this house was completely new hung, gutted the whole thing out, uh, there wouldn't be a huge difference in the amount of mud that we use for the tape bed and skim coats uh, because we have stuff in here on the ceiling that's, that's busted out nearly four foot wide to uh, make it you know, flat. 
uh, the most of the way. You got to get it flat enough to where when light passes over it, it doesn't have a hump and catch. Mm -hmm. So if you put a straight edge on it, it might not be flat, but what matters is the eye looking at it. Right. If it's flat to the eye, if it's flat to the hand, it's flat. Mm -hmm. You know, if the hand can't, the hand can't feel it, the eye can't see it. So right. And right. So this was about. Uh, Including our texture that we sprayed, we probably used about 14 to 15 boxes. That's here. crazy. Wow. I would think of six. Yeah. No, no indeed not. 14 so. boxes. Now we talked about these outside, well, what you, well, we talked about these walls like this, how important it is to get this square. Yes, sir. And this one was out, and that one was out, and I used your shingle trick. Mm -hmm under the drywall to make sure this was square. Right. On the West Coast, you can get cardboard drywall shims anywhere, but nobody here seems to have ever heard about them. So the shingle right. trick. You just pick up some shingles right. that are always laying around on the job, right. especially new construction, and, and, and use a few I shingles. I found a couple so. out back, and they were great, so this is nice and square. So when we run our base and our crown, everything right. is square and much easier to do. Absolutely. All right, well, cool, man. We sure appreciate it. All right, thank Just you, guys. Thank you, Tell your dad and Levi, we really appreciate their sure hard will. work. Sure will. And, uh, so. Cool. Now we, got, now we don't have to drywall anymore. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right, thanks, bud. Okay. All righty, gang. We sure hope you enjoyed our conversation with Josh. He's a young guy. By the time he's my age, he's going to be a genius. He knows a lot already. He's always got tips and tricks for us on hanging rock, framing, mudding, taping, texturing, all that stuff. And we're going to show you some close-ups of it. I know you've gotten a glimpse of it as we've been filming already this morning, but Jordan's gonna zoom in tight on a lot of these crisps corners and outside edges, inside edges. You ready to roll that, bud? Let's do it. Let's do it. Alrighty gang, we sure hope you enjoyed that up close footage of some of the details in this drywall taping and finishing job. Unbelievable job by Josh, Walter, and Levi. Five star in our book. We cannot wait to get this painted and all those crisp corners are just gonna pop. Josh was telling us some of the other details he requires of his board hanging crews, like only cutting from the paper side, not the brown paper side, the white paper side, so you get a nice crisp cut and the paper doesn't roll over. And then the other thing they don't allow them to do, and something we've never done, Jordan, is have one sheet overlap the other and trim it to length with a router. That makes it tough on those guys. And the other thing Josh said was they always put pressure on the drywall with one hand to get it tight on the stud, drive the screw with the other. That way they're not relying on the screw to pull the drywall tight to the stud. It already is tight and the screw is just going to hold it. So all those little details from Josh make them a perfect fit for Jordan and I because we're into details too. And details make the job. A lot of you have commented on that and that's how we roll over here. But our next step on this project, we're going to prime everything. But before we prime it, we've got to get up here at this old beam, kind of where the whole project started. And there's a few issues we need to fix on it before we can put a coat of primer up there. So let's head up this ladder and I'll show you what we're talking about. All righty gang, we're up here on this beam. Let me walk you through everything we gotta do. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is that they textured it. And that's on us, it's not on them. And here's the reason why. We got all these nails sticking out and that was wreaking havoc with them with the plastic. It was tearing the plastic. So they just textured the beam. No big deal, check this out. Got a damp sponge. It comes right off. Now we could just paint right over the texture, but I don't think it would look super good, especially because of the cove detail we're gonna put up here and all the little patches we gotta make and sand. 
So I'd rather the whole thing be smooth. So we're gonna clean it really fast, no problem. The other thing we gotta deal with is all these nails that are sticking out on this side of the beam only. And this is where our faux beam went down the ceiling right here. And if you'll notice, those are driven from the inside out. We can't figure out how they did it or why they even needed to do it that way. And the one to Jordan's right, there's about seven nails in that one, look at that. So how do they do all that? How do they drive these nails from the inside out? And again, there's none on this side, they're only here. It doesn't make sense that they built the whole thing on the ground and lifted it up, that doesn't make sense at all. So all I'm gonna do is drive these nails through, set them, we'll fill them with some spackle, sand it, it'll be good to go. We also have a few nails up here we need to remove that were attaching the original shoe molding that was here to cover this big gap. And how are we gonna cover that gap now? I bought this 11 16 by 11 16 cove molding, and it's gonna fit perfectly right there and cover that gap. It's gonna look sweet. Yep, you see how big it is here? Now we took all the other faux beams down. You saw it in that previous video, but we left this one and here's why. We know that the intersection of these two planes is a mess. We can even see through it when we're in the attic. And right here, I can see through it. They didn't tape it or anything, and it would have been nearly impossible to get that straight. So we thought we would just leave the beam to hide all that. Then we can hang our fan from the beam and it'll look great with all our other moldings. So this little cove is gonna cover it right here. And we're gonna run it all the way down on both sides, caulk all the joints here and here, and even caulk here and here so we don't get that little black line. And this will look like one solid piece of wood. When it's painted with a trim color, it's gonna pop, it's gonna be great. So why don't we drive these nails, clean this beam, install the cove, and get this thing ready for primer. That was one take, boys. I'm gonna get a close up shot of you moving some. So that was like the last shot. Cool man, that beam is ready for primer. Remember that old faux beam we had in here that had this house all dated and everything from the 80s? Now that's gonna be a central showpiece in this modern living room. Can't wait to put a coat of paint on it tomorrow. And that's actually the subject of our next video. We're gonna spray paint this whole room with our gray coat, prime coat only. But then you know what, Jordan and I were talking about the finished coats. How are we gonna do it? Are we gonna paint the ceilings first, then the trim, then the walls? Let us know in the comments how you would do it. Would you tape it off? Would you use a shield? We'd really be interested in seeing how the pros paint a room like this. So go ahead and spray some texture on that like button and Jordan and I are gonna make sure we come back behind you. Make it super clean so you can smash it. Ask us a question or just leave a comment if you'd like. Subscribe if you're not already and we'll see you on the next one.